for all verified facts. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and click the bell icon to get the latest updates. Hello and welcome. The United Kingdom is not accepting Indian travelers, at least not that easily. First, it did not recognize Covishield as a valid uh, vaccine. And then subsequently, it said that it was accepting Covishield, but still required Indian travelers to quarantine. Now, this is in contrast to Europe or mainland Europe, where countries like France and Germany are not insisting on quarantine. And if you are double vaccinated and have a negative RT-PCR test, you could pretty much sail through. So why is this happening? And more importantly, does it suggest that uh, in, in India, uh, our vaccination efforts are not uh, adequate or maybe there is something wrong with the efficacy of the vaccine itself? And that's only a question to pose for our own understanding and comfort. So to do that, I'm joined by Dr. Rajiv Jaydevan, uh, Vice Chair of the Research Chair of the Indian Medical Association based out of Kochi, and Dr. Vinita Bal, Immunologist and Faculty at the Indian Institute of Science Education Research in Pune, also a former scientist at the National Institute of Immunology in New Delhi. Thank you both for uh, joining me. So, uh, Dr. Bal, let me uh, begin with you. What's your sense and give us a sense rather on where we are in terms of the efforts that we've put in towards vaccination and the impact that it's having on the spread of COVID-19 in India? What I would say is that India started late in terms of its vaccination uh, program implementation and the availability of vaccine doses was extremely low. Even today, for our population size and for the eligible population, we are still falling short of what would be considered as an ideal target, even the targets that the government had set up of giving um, first dose at least to every eligible individual by end of December, I think it may or may not be achievable. But in the meantime, because of the Delta virus variant, which emerged from sort of February, March, April onwards, and uh, it, it created a huge wave, it was much more of a vaccine requirement which was felt. And in that sense, the uh, partly I would say that the impact of the second wave would have been much lesser if we were prepared and if we had vaccinated many more individuals even before February March. It seems like it is we are we have moved on quite a lot. But as I said, there is still impact of the positive impact of uh, vaccination that we do see despite saying uh, seeing breakthrough cases. The breakthrough cases are not as severe as they would have been otherwise. So, yes, there is an impact, but we are much shorter on what what would have been ideal and desirable. Right. OK. And, and, and I'm going to come back to that in a moment. Uh, Dr. Jaydevan, tell us uh, about how you see uh, the impact of vaccination, particularly from a state like Kerala, which is reporting uh, a substantial number of cases even today in contrast to the, the rest of the country. Yes, in contrast to the national levels, the a number of people who developed COVID-19 in the first year of the pandemic was quite small. It was only about 10%, maybe 11. Which means that about 89% of people were shielded from the virus. Remember that in 2020, there was no vaccine. There was really no medicine available. There's still no antiviral. So the only method available was to shield in one way or the other. You can use mask and social distancing and avoiding social gathering as methods of shielding. Now this worked for Kerala. It's a relatively small state with a robust public health system, good communication network, literate population. So people shielded enthusiastically. Now the flip side of shielding is susceptibility or to use a more harsh word, it's vulnerability which means that the 89% of people who were not exposed in the first half of the pandemic were subjected to an exposure, as Dr. Bile mentioned, of the Delta variant. It was Alpha variant in the beginning of the year. Fortunately, it didn't make much of a damage. It, didn't, it did not create much of a damage here. But when Delta variant hit, fortunately, we went in for a lockdown and that saved, at least from my end of the world, it saved the healthcare system from collapsing. It did come under a bit of strain, but right. there, were, there was no overflowing. But as the lockdown was lifted, Delta variant hadn't gone anyway, anyway uh, hadn't gone anywhere, it was still here. And people, as I mentioned, 
a large section of the people had never seen the virus before and vaccination, as Dr. Pal said, was just catching on. So around the middle of the year, this combination of events and humid, warm, rainy conditions, which are ideal for most respiratory viruses, the combination resulted in what we call a slow burn process. It's neither going up nor coming down dramatically, but overall there's a gradual decline. So we believe that as more vaccination kicks in and more people get naturally infected or combinations thereof, the impact that is felt will be lower and lower as time weather. Right. So uh, let, let me let, let me pose the COVID shield question and uh, let me come back to you, uh, Dr. Bal. So uh, COVID shield has been administered uh, uh, across the country. Uh, it is the majority uh, vaccine or the major vaccine that's being uh, administered as opposed to co-vaccine. Now, uh, some countries have concerns about, uh, I mean, there could be two, two kinds of concerns. One is that whether those who present certificates saying that they are vaccinated are actually vaccinated or not, or there is some error. The second is that the vaccine itself is not effective or uh, efficacious as being claimed. W what do you feel uh, when you look at evidence both within the country and outside could be the case? Uh, COVID shield, as we are calling it, uh, it's an uh, Oxford University AstraZeneca Serum Institute vaccine, if one wants to be precise about it. It is as good as practically any other vaccine. There are always little bit of pluses, little bit of minuses, including mRNA vaccines and other vaccines which are available. But there isn't anything much to choose or much to discard. Certainly, Covishield is a very good vaccine. And uh, in that sense, the doses that we, uh, the, we are re recommending, we as in Government of India is recommending, initially it was after a gap of four to six weeks. Now it is a gap of about 12 weeks. And even if there are some ifs and buts about this gap, whenever the two sh uh, shots are given, 15 days after that, even from Delta variant, there is a significant protection which is offered to Indians who have primarily received Covishield. So I do, I see uh, this ban on Covishield or uh, putting forth qu quarantine as a condition, as a political stance rather than any science-based stance. And if there are other commercial interests involved in it, in the sense that, you know, manufacturers have some interest in keeping people away and so on, those are beyond me right now. But as I see it, this is essentially a political issue. There is no science behind it. And in that sense, uh, scientists from UK, if they are involved in making this decision, then they should be embarrassed for making such a decision. Right. And do you have any sense about any explanation to this effect? I mean, I haven't seen any, so which is why I'm asking you from the scientific community. Uh, explanation? No. I, I mean, uh, I don't know whether Public Health England and the scientists who are part of that have uh, put out any statement. But that is what I'm saying, that AstraZeneca vaccine is extensively used within UK. There are very many benefits of it that have been seen in UK. And what we are using uh, as Covishield in India, manufactured by Serum Institute, is essentially that. So uh, I do not see why in one country that should be an acceptable regimen and why from another country it, will, it should not be acceptable. That is why I am saying if scientists are actually recommending it, they should think twice about whether this is based on scientific evidence or, as I am calling it, a political drive rather than really any rational reason for it. Right. Uh, Dr. Jaydevan, now, if, if I were to uh, ask you to, uh, you know, respond more empirically, you know, in, when you look on ground today and uh, particularly uh, post, let's say, the peak of the second wave uh, in terms of, let's say, uh, admissions in hospitals and so on, which have definitely come down, what's your sense? I mean, uh, how is Covishield working today uh, or Covaxin for that matter? How is the vaccination effort working today? And is that making any difference in, let's say, hospital admissions or the, the severity of the cases that are now coming in? Both vaccines uh, that are in wide use in India, in our experience here, at least from the Kerala experience, both have been excellent. Now, for our viewers, I think they would like to know that vaccines protect on many fronts, like a student can be graded on different subjects, uh, giving different marks for different subjects. Likewise, vaccines can be graded for A, 
their ability to stop you from being infected by the virus, B, their ability to prevent symptoms from appearing, and C, ability to prevent severe disease, D, ability to prevent death. So all of these are different calculations here. What we know for sure is that all the mainstream vaccines used all around the world are excellent at preventing severe disease and death. And our experience locally on the ground is exactly the same. The vast majority of people who are in severe disease or in the ICU or unfortunate enough to succumb to the illness are all people who have not completed vaccination. There are a few people who have received one dose vaccine, which may not be so effective in preventing severe disease. Now, there is one other combination I'd like to mention because there are many people in our country who've been naturally exposed to this virus knowingly or unknowingly. We are aware that almost a half of these infections appear and leave without symptoms, that is without the patient knowing about it. When these individuals receive one dose, they're essentially fully vaccinated because they've had two exposures to the antigen. So in someone who has not had such a prior exposure, when you receive one dose, it's called the prime do priming dose and the second dose is the boosting dose. So basically, the point here is that there are several individuals in India who have received a two doses of vaccine, two doses of vaccine in addition to past infection, one dose of vaccine and past infection and combinations thereof. And there are very few people left who have not had either one dose of vaccine or natural exposure to infection. So I think as time wears on, we will have fewer and fewer people who are unprotected. The good thing that India did was we, even though our vaccine supply was somewhat suboptimal in the beginning, we chose the right people to vaccinate. A, we chose the highest risk category. That's people who are constantly exposed to the virus. Those are the healthcare and frontline workers. They got the dose first and followed, as you know, by the older segment. COVID-19, I emphasize, is a disease that preferentially affects the older people. And it cannot be emphasized enough. The risk of death in a 70-year-old person is more than 200 times that of a young adult. Therefore, vaccination, you can get, as they say, the juice is worth the squeeze in the older segment. If you vaccinate 50 to 70 efficiently, you can prevent more deaths than, you can, than if you use the same vaccine doses in the 20 to 40 group. That's my point. Right. Uh, Dr. Bal, you know, uh, this is something I guess many public health uh, experts are trying to compute, uh, at least for our own internal understanding. So if you were to look at this equation, as uh, Dr. Jaydevan as well as, as pointed out, you know, those who are, let's say, uh, have developed immunity because they've already contracted the disease or have been infected by it or what we've called uh, seroprevalence, uh, those who have maybe got one dose and those, of course, who've got two doses. So where, where do we stand as a population today and, and uh, in, in our, uh, let's say, sus likely susceptibility to future infections, particularly in the near future? We have uh, ICMR ser serum, uh, zero surveys as a guide to uh, areas with high, high and low zero prevalence. Kerala, where my colleague comes from, he has had one of the states which had very low prevalence zero prevalence and he explained the reasons for that but many other in fact big cities like Delhi apparently have 80-85% zero positivity which means there are very few people left who are actually exposed and this zero prevalence also uh, covers uh, people under the age of 18 years so all the population has been covered if you want to really look at the averages about 60% but this is not uniformly distributed this is distributed in patches and that is where the problem is. So what we need to identify as a country from public health perspective is areas where zero prevalence, zero positivity is low and that is where the vaccination should be concentrated. Of course, that doesn't mean the other should, be, should not be given vaccine, but these low areas of low zero positivity are still a lot more vulnerable for catching Delta or any other variants which might come our way. And that is the kind of public health policy strategy that needs to be evolved. But for that, 
one actually needs data say just an example in belgaum how what is the zero prevalence in pune what is the zero prevalence even within pune there are pockets where there are less zero positive and uh, high high zero pre- uh, positive individuals so this kind of local uh, studies or local picture is what is ideally required and that is how the vaccine uh, should be channelized because there is no other way of preventing this and i don't think we have where we all with whatever data we have uh, and uh, we don't most of the cities are not smart cities not enough data collected of this granularity so these problems will remain as a result wherever we understand that there is low zero prevalence low zero positivity it should be uh, the target area now onwards for sure right and last question to both you and uh, dr jaydevan so let me begin with you dr bal so uh, you know uh, this came up in the context of travel now when we travel uh, in many cases we are also doing uh, rt pcr tests and only if you have a negative test can you board an aircraft and and travel and that goes for people uh, coming into india as well and of course there is uh, the double vaccination now what is your sense about where we are today in the spread of covid uh, and the measures that have been taken so far number 1 and number 2 what more could we do given the pace at which things are going to maybe give people comfort that you know uh, things are not as bad as they might think they are uh, particularly in a large country like india well things are not certainly as bad and i would uh, there have been many models on modelers who have predicted that a big wave is likely to emerge from now onwards in october and november i disagree with that and for the reasons which i mentioned that zero positivity status is so different in different parts of the country so if there are uh, outbreaks they will certainly be there but what we saw in april and may country wide pretty much not so much again in kerala but country wide in general as a huge wave uh, that is unlikely to happen so that is one positive point the second apprehension that most people have especially people with kids is that they are not vaccinated and educational institutions are still not started and i do feel that we know from this national level zero survey that even uh, uh, kids under the age of 18 at least 50% have of them uh, are already zero positive and almost all of them went without symptoms or illness that should be an assurance and we should actually start the educational institutions by vaccinating every adult in the school or every adult in the college because they are eligible and they should be vaccinated they are more at risk but these are some of the issues and they will that will keep bring some peace of mind and sort of sense of normality because educational institutions are the ones where there is a complete stop and at least some some of these um, businesses and professions other professions have started functioning so there is some economic activity but educational activity is actually completely stopped and we do need to begin that with precautions right. slowly and steadily and i think that is an important point right. that and, and that itself consider. is an indicator that we are not confident we've uh, things are under control even at this point uh, dr jaydevan uh, over to you for the last word where do we where do we stand uh, what more do we need to do Yes, uh, I would be a little, uh, little on the cautious side simply because of a basic mathematical principle, which we sometimes forget when we look at large numbers. The principle says, even a small percentage of a large number is still a large number. So even if our country is nicely vaccinated, and even if a large percentage of people zero convert, in other words, get exposed to natural infection. there will still be a percentage of people who have had neither or have uh, or the immunity has just waned off that is happening in the us us is a fully vaccinated you know it's, a, it's not a fully vaccinated it's a well vaccinated nation over 55% are fully vaccinated and 60 plus percent are half vaccinated if you look at the wave now it looks like it is worse than the previous wave you may think superficially that's a failure of vaccination it is not this pandemic in the us is almost exclusively affecting the unvaccinated and the same could occur in india, in india as well as dr bal said we must selectively focus on these individuals or areas that are more likely to face 
waves, future waves. There will be future waves, but as Dr. Bal said, it's more likely that they will appear in regional forms rather than for the whole country as a whole. In, in, in one sense, what happened in India was the Delta II, which is much faster spreading, came and found there were several pockets in every part of India that had not been infected. And it is these people that primarily succumbed to the disease. And it was still a large number. That's why the wave appeared huge. So looking forward, we must definitely vaccinate as many people as possible. And on a positive note, there's plenty of evidence coming out that if you give a dose of the same vaccine, it is still good against the variants. So that is one of the beauty, one of the, one of the fascinating aspects of our immunology. Our immunology immune system has been underrated. You know, we've, we've lived on the planet for all, almost 200,000 years and our immune system has been exposed to these viruses and it knows how to fight viruses. And it knows even what kind of changes can potentially happen in a virus. And that's been proven beyond doubt in more than one institution of excellence. In other words, you don't really need to have a vaccine for every variant. You don't need to do that. And that's been shown. That's that's encouraging news. Right. So when the second dose comes in or a dose goes in after natural infection, yes, that person is well protected again from severe disease and not necessarily very well from uh, repeat infection. Right, right. Uh, on that note, uh, Dr. Jaydevan and uh, Dr. Bal, thank you very much uh, for joining me. Uh, yes, you may not be, you may not find it easy to travel to countries like the United Kingdom, uh, but do remember that there are other countries, including uh, most of uh, uh, mainland Europe, that you can travel to, including France and Germany, uh, which seem, uh, which are uh, at this point perfectly fine with uh, Indian travelers who are double vaccinated and of course produce an RT-PCR certificate. When I say easy, I mean that you don't have to quarantine. So hopefully these things will change. But more importantly, or most importantly, uh, there is some comfort that uh, we in India, uh, the vaccination effort is working and the disease at this point seems to be under control. Uh, thank you both for joining me. Thank you. Thank you.